it's certainly not the one ring though. Um, but like, I'm really into magic, but I've, I've kind of come to terms with like, I'm not very good at it. I just enjoy it. And, um, I quit playing competitively a Mm -hmm. while ago and I don't really have time to play with my friends anymore. Right. Um, so I, so I quit buying magic. But when I saw that was a Lord of the Rings set, I was like, I might, I might have to buy some of this, but I know that I'll just buy it. (laughs) Right. I know that I'll just buy it and it'll just sit on the shelf or it'll sit in my closet. Like I'll I'll never get any use out of it. Well, (laughs) what they did to entice people, uh, you know, to buy into this set, they made a one ring card, the one ring. It is a single card. They made a single card, one Mm. of one. Which is very, you know, it fits That's unheard of. <laughs> it, it's unheard of and it fits the theme so well. It's yep. the one ring and it's yep. the only one that they ever printed. Well, um, this guy pulls it. The, the some guy pulls it out of a booster set, like like right as the, the launch of the of the of the set. Like it, it wow. took less than were, were there released. that many people just like going nuts over this, or or was it just luck, you know, that they happened to be in that first round? Let's see if it says I've got an article here. It Tales of Middle Earth was the name of the uh of the set and it came out on June twenty third. Let's see when this guy found the card. This guy the 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 June thirtieth. Okay. He had found it. And he wow. posts a, a video online of him pulling the card out and he's like, you know, like shaking hand, like he you know, he knows what he has. <laughs> um and they do a special thing where they like they do like like normal boosters and then they do like a, a premium booster. That's a yeah. new thing they started doing since before I was in since I was in the magic. Um, and I think you had to get one of the premium boosters in order to get the card, which is a good idea because I was thinking, what if some kid just bought a booster pack at Target? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't even know what he had. Yeah, no idea. He's at home doing magic tricks with it or something. <laughs> yeah, just throws it in the trash. This is worthless. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh the card so the so that's that's wild in itself that someone found this single card. Yeah. But then on top of that, the card was purchased. So immediately people are giving him offers trying to buy this thing. Oh yeah, well, I'm sure. The card was purchased by Post Malone for two million dollars, over two million dollars. That's 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 just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a wild, such a wild story, man. I and mean, you know, the last couple of years I had been hearing like I'm not I I'm familiar with Post Malone enough to know that I like right. him as a person, but I couldn't tell you a name of one of his songs because I'm too much of a boomer. But like <laughs> <laughs> but I know that he's he's into Magic the Gathering because he had been the last couple of years he's been talking about magic. And he was on a uh, there's a commander podcast. He was on mm-hmm. a, a, a Magic the Gathering commander, um, like they, they, he actually played the game on this podcast. Okay, um, cool. And so it kind of makes sense that he would really want this unique card. And if you yeah. just have enough money to burn on something because you're such a huge fan, you know, wh- why not? I mean, that's that's a huge flex to have two million dollars <laughs> to just be like, I'll just buy this thing because I. I I love it. The brand so much. That's like, that's like us going to the store and be like, uh, do I want Lay's or do I want wise chips? I don't know. <laughs> I'll go for the Lay's. Yeah. I have a couple extra bucks this week. <laughs> so the question that I pose for the opening of this episode is if you had any amount of money to waste on a single fanatic purchase, what would it be? A, oh, a few man. episodes. This is not my answer, but this is an example. A few episodes ago, <laughs> we talked about the EVGA uh 4090 or 40 uh, what, the, the yes. card that was never released but they yes. sent a few out to to uh, a few youtubers um that would be like a purchase if 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 i just had like i think it sold for like ten thousand dollars or something like if i if i had just that money to just waste that would be a pretty cool flex for me to say that i've got the only you know i've got the one of one evga yeah. i can't remember what card it was but you yeah know, that right, would be right. That would be pretty sick. That'd be, that'd um, be awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good example. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what my true answer would be, though. That, that's the best thing I could come up with. Yeah, I mean, that's... Oh, man, it, it that's tough. That's tough. I got Any one. Any amount of money. I got one. I know what mine legitimately... And people have these, so I don't know how much they go for, but there's there are people that actually buy these. So they're not terribly expensive, but um, whenever Vanilla World of Warcraft... Whenever the original mm. servers were being retired, 
people were buying those and putting them in like glass cases and things. That would be that would be a cool item to own. Would be uh, that's pretty cool. An original World of Warcraft server, uh, you know, hard drive or something, uh, some kind of part from that. Oh man, I don't know. Those actually might be gettable. Let me see if they're on eBay because <laughs> I've seen those. I've I've seen those before. I just looked at World of Warcraft server on eBay. <laughs> oh yeah, the, yeah. Oh, dude, they're not that expensive. Okay. Oh okay. <laughs> Uh, and they're, they're well, more than goes out the window. They're still a good example because it's more money than I'd be willing to spend on something yeah, yeah. that's just going to sit on my shelf. But yeah, for three grand, you can buy a, you can buy one of the original World of Warcraft uh, servers, and it has a, uh, it has like a uh, like a glass case over it with the World of Warcraft logo. Yep. Um, imposed on it. Oh man! So does it have to be one item, or can it be like a bundle? <laughs> Sure. What's what's what is what's the bundle? All right. Maybe uh, uh, all right. Maybe it'll make sense. So, I would buy mint condition, like unopened, first generation consoles, all of them. Hmm. Hmm. You that can do would that. Be, that would be awesome to have. Like, just have that a whole wall just dedicated yeah. to to consoles. Yeah. That's. <laughs> I think you and I are not. We're not. Uh, you can tell that we both grew up poor because we're not imaginative enough <laughs> <Yeah>. for this. <laughs> Look. Hello and welcome to Crowbar Kernel Panic, the podcast at the intersection of Linux and gaming. This is episode 41. It has been way too long since we've done an episode. Um, we've been... Yeah. Yeah, it has. Been busy with work, changes at work, Yeah, storms. My power was out last time <laughs> we tried to do the episode. Oh um, man, it's just been crazy. It has, and, been, uh, it has been nuts. <laughs> I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning and there was like another huge storm going on and i was like i was like not again right like if the if the power goes out tonight i swear i swear (laughs) (laughs) i don't know what i'm gonna do this episode is pre-recorded and will be released on youtube on itunes and other podcast apps please like subscribe and comment however you prefer to however you prefer to enjoy the show send us an email at crowbar kernel panic at pm.me yes you can join us on this email Yeah, we don't get any emails, do we? (laughs) No, I haven't gotten any. I I question question if it works, but then I I had you test it a couple times and it worked fine. You can join us on Discord. I have a a link to the Discord in the show notes. So this episode, we actually got a pretty good news lineup. Pretty excited about these stories. And then we got some games to get into, but I don't think that's the that's the top of the show. I don't think that's the headliner. I think the (laughs) thing that we're going (laughs) to title this episode on is Trackball Mouse and... And why? So uh, <laughs> you've been posted in the Discord, and even to me privately. You're so excited about it. You, you've, I've seen it both in the community and just to me directly. Uh, what's the deal with the trackball mouse? You're like all about the trackball life. All right, let me explain. Let me explain. So, a couple of weeks ago, yeah, my arm just starts like throbbing, and I mean, it's it's just i can't even do anything like i didn't even come home like i i come almost every day and i'm on my computer yeah for for those days i just wasn't i just I, it hurt so bad i just had to lay down Man. and just whatever so i'm like i gotta figure out what why this is hurting why this is hurting blah 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 so i decide i'm gonna buy this like 20 dollar trackball mouse it's like a vertical trackball mouse so it's it's really weird looking yeah so i'm like eh, I'll, I'll buy it what the heck so uh, well, I'll just explain this. The first one was garbage. It didn't work. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to get a replacement one. And I got a replacement yeah. one. I'm lucky I did because it actually, that one worked. And so I used that. And literally the first day, the pain went away. Like, huh. I haven't had pain since I got that that mouse. So. so the, but, and you, you attribute it to you've been using your mouse too aggressively. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I, I, I it, I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. What is the, oh. all right, I'm going to Google what is the usefulness of a trackball mouse. Dude, the thing is about trackball mouse is once you become a trackball person, you never go back to being a non trackball person. So, <laughs> and I'm kind of sort of getting that now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. What is the benefit? 
I should ask Chat GPT. Oh yeah. Okay. Hold on. Here All we right. go. <laughs> <laughs> Pump an AI into our stuff. Maybe we can get some uh, some uh, V three funding or uh, VC funding. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can. Uh, I haven't been on here in in a while, so I got to lo- relog in. The funny thing that you brought up, the trackball thing, is so. I started a new position at work. I work with new people, and there's this one guy that uses a trackball, and I it just stood out in my mind as just being so <laughs> odd. Like I hadn't seen one in, in like such a long time. Is it, and is it thumb or finger operated? Thumb. He moves. Okay, the, yeah. He moves the cursor with his thumb, and he clicks yep. with his fingers. But he's like, all right, so I made the joke whenever you told me. Yeah, it's like one of these. Yeah, it's not quite. His is more vertical. Like his, he would hold like this. Yeah, that's the first one I got. Yeah, that's probably the same one. If it's like the cheapest one on Amazon, it's probably, well, it's probably it's the, the target. cheapest one. <laughs> and, and, you know, I made the joke whenever you told me. I was like, what are you, working at the DMV now? Like, what are you, a government employee? Yep. Like, <laughs> because... <laughs> Because it seems like the only time I ever see a trackball is like, it is like a, some sort of government employees is using it. And this guy is like ex-military. So I always attributed it to like, oh, it's a, <laughs> it's like a military thing. Like he, 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 he feels more at home because he used that whenever he was like working on base or something. All right, let's see. What are the benefits of using a trackball mouse. All right, let's do what Chat GPT says. <laughs> oh man, she's uh, she's giving me a list. Uh, oh, no. They are giving me a list. I don't know what uh, Chat GPT's gender is. Um, Genderless. <laughs> using a trackball mouse can offer several benefits compared to a traditional mouse that use a movable physical surface uh, for tracking movement. Here are some of the advantages of using a trackball. One, ergonomics. Uh, one of the primary advantages of a trackball mouse is the ergonomic design. With a trackball mouse, you don't need to move the entire mouse uh, around the desk. Instead, yep. you control the cursor and manipulating the uh, stationary ball. Um, precision and control. Uh, so I don't I know like, about that yet. I was going to say, I feel <laughs> like I would have less precision and less control. So- the mouse that I have is kind of nice because there's a little button you can press and it yeah. puts the DPI way down. So if you really ah. need to get that fine grain, you know, control, that does work. But like otherwise, it's definitely not as precise. But anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay. It says uh, space efficiency. So I totally get that. Less space yeah, that, on your desk. That is 100%. Yep. Um, less physical movement. I, I get that. That's why you're throwing your shoulder Less, out over yes. there, slinging your mouse around on your desk. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, check out a new Baldur's Gate for <laughs> three. <laughs> um, uh, less surface dependence. Uh, that's similar to the yeah, basically the same. <laughs> uh, reduced cable interface uh, interference. Um, right, because I guess with the buttons. cable, you'd be knock, knocking it around if you had to move the mouse around a lot. With this, it's only yeah. stationary. My mouse is about to die. Is he flashing red there? Oh, we have man. this is the this is the limit to the show right here. Um, whenever this runs out, we can't click on any more links. Oh we no, just, <laughs> just banter. <laughs> so, I, so I guess there are benefits. Uh, they gave us a list of about le- uh, nine nine here. Yeah, I mean, so, I can uh, I can say that it definitely helped a hundred percent. Like my arm does not hurt yeah. anymore. And like, if I try to use a regular mouse for, for any length so of time, it starts to hurt. At work, do you use a, um, do you use a mouse with your laptop or do you just use the touchpad on your laptop? Um, I typically have, I have a desktop at work, so I, I basically you just use a mouse. Yeah, yeah. I use my mouse, but if I have to use a trackpad, I will. The trackpad doesn't hurt as bad as the mouse does. I don't know if that's because I'm not moving my arm as much or what, but hmm. I never got that sensation from a, a trackpad. I've never really heard of it from people using a mouse, but I have heard of artists, especially digital artists drawing on a screen, um, getting, you know, like almost like a tennis elbow yeah. um, from drawing. Well, um, it's not even, it wasn't even like a tennis elbow or anything like that. It was just literally my arm would hurt from my wrist all the way up to my elbow. Like it would be almost like sore, but at the yeah. same time, and then it would get like a numb f- feeling down my middle finger. Like, mm-hmm. so the reason that, the reason I asked about the touchpad is because uh, a couple of weeks ago, I noticed that I was having kind of a cramp in my mm-hmm. in my hand right there. And it's yeah. because, so we, we have to go into the office one day a week. And on those days, 
I don't use my mouse. I just use the, I just use my laptop and I go park yeah. myself in some fancy you know place. And then I, I use the laptop and I was naturally always putting my hand in this. Even when I wasn't using the touchpad, I would still just always, I, my new typing position, I would kind of put my thumb in that way. And that was causing me to have a cramp right there. So I started bringing, I brought one of my extra mice uh, okay, to work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've never thrown my shoulder out using, using the mouse. So, <laughs> so, in, so do you use the trackpad even if you're like playing games and stuff or have you not had time to do that? No, no, no. I it? switch, I switch out to my regular mouse oh, for that. Oh, okay, you, you, okay. There's no way. I couldn't game with the, with yeah. the, yeah, not, not yet at least at all. <laughs> Me and, like if um, it's a casual game sure but if it's like first person shooter or even even like witcher or something like that no way yeah <laughs> whenever i used to play um counter-strike a lot um there was a guy that i knew actually i didn't know him he was a friend of a friend's but we used to always joke about how he always used a trackball to play counter-strike and we used to joke that like he was so good he could just spin the ball and stop it where it was supposed <laughs> to land and do all this fancy tricks with it hey you joke but yeah. I'm getting I'm getting pretty good at doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Your character is gonna be like spinning around the screen and stopping and shooting somebody and spinning. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah, I support it. I'm here for it. I want to know more about the hey, track. As long ball. as my arm feels better, that's all I care about. Yeah, no, I think you're going to get used to it and like you're not going to ever want to use a mouse again. <laughs> See, I don't want to know. See, I I, I don't want to know what I'm missing out on because I don't want to be one of those people. So I don't want to I, I don't want to I don't want to try it and find out. <laughs> 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 All right. So last episode, we talked about uh, Red Hat, the closed sourcing of yeah. uh, Red Hat code. Yep. And we got a comment on that video that I thought was a pretty good comment. And had we have done an episode like a week later, it would have been a really cool discussion. Kind of feel like we're a little distant from it. I don't know that I'll have the same insight that I would have uh, back then, but it was a really good comment. And I really appreciate the comment. Um, and it's real if o copy paste. Real if o copy paste. I don't know. If the yeah, Red Hat model saying. is successful, will we see that be adopted in other places? And we have to start paying for a uh, stable version of uh, a distro like maybe they have the free version yeah. and then a paid version uh, and also have to pay to uh, modify the source code um, only unstable distros would be free and uh, I think that's a good uh, I think that's a good comment and uh, I don't know that that would be the case though I yeah, think it would be I the mean, case with business I think, mm -hmm. you know, Red Hat is a different scenario because it is a business focused right. distro. Would they ever do the same thing with Fedora? I don't think so. And I don't really think they could. And even if they did, they would probably just fork it and just have another version. Ubuntu <laughs> server. I could see like something yeah, like Ubuntu, Ubuntu server. Yep. Yeah, I could see they have a, they're having a paid version of that and then a community version of it. Which yep. which I think would suck. I hope that doesn't happen. But I no, but yeah. I could see that. I don't ever see there being a paid version of Manjaro versus the free version, <laughs> you know, or anything like that. I, or I Arch in general. Yeah. I think that, um, I think that it would be like the business focused distros that, that could follow yeah. that sort of model. I think if my speculation would be that if we were to see that trend happen, I think the next people to kind of jump on that ship would be canonical. I think, yeah, I think we might see yeah, it. There. I think, I think we're going to see, we're going to see a departure from home users using uh commercial distros i think a lot yeah. of people are going to go back to their arches back to their debians you know that kind of stuff and they're going to get off of all the uh possible yanking of you know under the rug you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. of these uh corporations that can just you know say hey you're gonna have to pay for that now if you really want you know something that's gonna work yeah but two two red hats two red hats um uh credit at least you can get 16 free licenses still mm. for rel you can still do that that's fine um but wow. of course when's that gonna when's that gonna change i never i didn't realize that yeah if you have a develop well it's free to sign up for the developer account you just do oh, that oh gotcha okay and then you get 16 free licenses that you can use okay yeah but i i, I don't see them getting rid of that but they could if people try to like you know cheese the system or whatever <laughs> yeah you're right you pay for support 
So like you pay for the yes. ability to be able to call and get them to right. work on something for you, but the license to actually operate the uh, the software, you get 16 of those. Right. Huh. Yep. Okay. That's that's good to know. That's interesting. But yeah. So I think that was a really good, I think that's a really good um, comment and uh, show topic. I think that, um, I don't know that I 100% share the sentiment that everybody could go that route, but I do think that uh, we're probably going to see whether, you know, Good or bad, we're probably going to see more yep. of that going forward. Yep, I agree. Uh, so let's go over some news items, and we'll take these one by one. I've got to get the, uh, I've got to get the screen share set up. Yeah, this this first one I'm not as familiar with anymore because I haven't really thought about Linux Mint in probably oh, yeah, like a I year. Know. It's so interesting. I was um, okay. There it goes. Yeah, I know. I actually, there's a part of this article that kind of got me thinking about Linux Mint again, but yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. We haven't, neither one of us have used it in quite a while. And, you know, with, with the switch to my RK770, I've been scared to use anything other than something (laughs) (laughs) Arch-based because I'm afraid I'm going to go back to some kernel where it's not going to work again. Um, But that's, so that's the part of this article that I, that I, I want to point out when we get there. So this was in the uh, July monthly update. Um, they released on August, August 2nd. And in here, they talk a little bit about Mint 21.3 and sort of what they have planned for that um, and for that release. Um, one thing they mentioned is that they need to f- fix a uh, secure boot are starting to, the, the way they word it is kind of funny here. They, they say that they're starting to investigate the feasibleness of of Wayland. Let me see if I can find that part of the article. Wait, wait. <laughs> They're starting yeah. to investigate the feasibleness of it? Yeah. We're it's... going to it. That's it. There's going to be, there's no more X development. There's no I security think, anything for I think X. the way I just said it is underplaying it a little bit, but let okay. me see. Let me just, let me just, let me just <laughs> buzz said through. It, I just, I was just like, what? No, it really is. It really is something like that. It's going to stick out to you. So uh, looking further ahead, um, after LMDE6 and Edge ISO. Let's go back to those two things. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we're likely to reduce the scope of Linux Mint 21.3, uh, which is planned for Christmas of 2023. We've got many exciting ideas. I'm sure some of the cool new features uh, we have in mind will be implemented, but we want to prioritize some long-term aspects and dedicate some of our time to them. So they're saying we want to, We've got some mm-hmm, big ideas, mm-hmm. but we, there's some stuff that we really need to micro focus on um, yeah. in this upcoming release. Namely, uh, we want to update our ISO production tools to fix Secure Boot. That's we important. also want to spend some time studying the pros and cons of Wayland and to assess the work needed in its potential adoption. Mm. So that was the quote that I I, okay. I butchered in my paraphrasing of. But even that to me says like, yeah, what's the other option? Like, you, you, like yeah, there's there's I don't think there's a version of Linux Mint that's not going to adopt Wayland. So I mean, yeah. I think the real wording is is that like we're we're starting to see how we can adopt it now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah basically, <laughs> they're trying not to scare anybody, being like, oh, we're going to pull the rug out from under you and just yeah. go straight to Wayland. You know? Yeah. Last but not least, we're keeping an eye on Ubuntu, uh, their increased focus on Snap, the quality of the 24.04 package base, and what this means for us going forward. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It goes on to talk about the LMDE community yep. and how they uh, they are a very vocal uh, community. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and they're, you know, they basically want to see uh, Linux Mint do more development in LMDE, especially if there's mm-hmm. some sort of uh, uh, tension between uh, the uh, Ubuntu base and yep. Um, yep. and Linux Mint. People are getting worried, man. People are getting worried. So I understand the perspective of not liking the focus on snaps. Now, I, yeah. I less understand the quality of the packages just because I'm not a, um, I'm not a, uh, desktop environment developer like i'm not develop uh, you know what i mean like yeah i wouldn't well, know the I ins think, and outs of that the way they do i think what they're talking about is with uh, with them focusing on snap they yeah. don't want the quality of the package base right. of ubuntu to start to decline yeah because they're assuming oh well we don't care how quality our package 
our packages right, we just, are because everybody's just going to use the snap anyway. Yes, right, exactly. That's what they're yeah. saying. Yes, I understand that aspect of it. But I'm just saying I wouldn't know it firsthand the way someone right. developing an operating system would, um, or or a distribution would. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my thought is, I don't think that Linux Mint wants to step too far away. I can I can understand it from a marketing perspective. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so. I don't think Linux Mint wants to step too far away from the Ubuntu base because they know that they are this like alternate. I hesitate to say flavor because that's a real thing. I don't mean flavors in the <laughs> sense of an Ubuntu flavor. They're not an Ubuntu flavor, but like they're this alternative to like the standard Ubuntu um, where maybe you're like, well, I want sort of the, the code base of Ubuntu, but I want something that sort of fits my, uh, desktop uses par- right. usage paradigm a little bit more. I mean, that's essentially that's the fan base of Linux Mint. Exactly. That's what we were for a long time. Yep. And I think that they don't want to stray too far away from that. But also, I think it's good that Ubuntu is like we're going to be the Snap distro, and Linux Mint says, okay, well, we're going to take all the good things about Ubuntu, but we're not going to be the Snap distro. Right. You right. Know, we're we're gonna we're gonna have flat packs and a you know, we're going to do our best to support uh, packages and however you want to install them. I, I, I don't necessarily think that that is a, a bad thing to have that comparison. What good right. would it be if, if Ubuntu was too close to what Linux Mint was? What good would that be for Linux Mint? I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and obviously, the getting rid of the snaps didn't hurt Linux Mint's adoption at all. Because if you look at their donations per month, it hasn't changed since then. So it's like, you know, yeah, that, that didn't seem to, to do anything. Them getting rid of snaps. That is. Yeah. Now, if there was some huge leap in LMDE, then I would probably use LMDE. I've always liked the idea of it, but anytime yeah. we've ever experimented with it, we've always, decided that while it's yep. nice it's just a lot more work than just yep. using there's regular one there's one or two things that just don't work quite right like especially for for me when i was using my nvidia card there's no like easy easy quote unquote install for that so you have to go through all this process just to install yeah. your your nvidia card now that's fine and all but the problem is every time it updates, you got to do the same thing over and over and over again. It's just it's just too much for me. So then, I mean, I don't want to come home and have to do that every day. <laughs> so I hate to keep jumping all over this, but I can also see the perspective of the LMDE community. Well, then, if you just focused on that, maybe you could fix those one or two things yeah. where Josh would love it. You know, if exactly. they weren't if they weren't trying to also upkeep this like Ubuntu based thing, then yep. they could just do LMDE right. And then. Yep. So I don't know. The, the problem the problem the with thing. LMDE is it's been Linux Mint's backup for years. It hasn't been the main focus. And the yeah. problem is the problem with that is is that it'll never be up to snuff for yeah. the people who are using regular Linux Mint. So when that time comes when Ubuntu says, Hey, uh, we're gonna do something crazy like get rid of Debs altogether, mm-hmm. uh Linux Mint or LMDE is not gonna be ready. It'll never be ready if they yeah. do not focus on it more. Are, are, is there going to come a day where they have to <laughs> they have to finally pull that ripcord and they discover that they've not upkept the uh, parachute the way they were supposed to? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Who you know, knows? Maybe that could happen. <laughs> there was an article a few years ago that was all about how uh, Linux Mint should just, and I'm not saying I agree with this, but I, right. I understand the perspective, how Linux Mint, their biggest contribution to the Linux community will be the cinnamon desktop and yes how much better and more adopted would it be if they just focused on that if they didn't also roll a distro Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um yep and and i think i think that at the time we discussed that there would there would have to be some distro like a linux mint that would adopt cinnamon Um, right right so i mean there would so essentially whether it was linux mint or it was you know, puppy Linux or something like there'd have to be some right. distro that would adopt cinnamon and then they would work closely together to, you know, it would have been great if, um, back whenever, um, pop OS mm-hmm. was upset with Ubuntu, not upset, but they were like, you know, we don't really want to roll Ubuntu anymore. We want to roll our own thing because we want it to be you know, tailored for what right. we want our user base to see what our laptops to the use. Yeah. Yeah. 
if in an in an alternate dimension somewhere in the Spider Verse, if <laughs> if they had said, "Well, we're going to adopt cinnamon," and then Linux Mint focused on making cinnamon great, yeah. you know, in in con- in conjunction with Pop conjunction, OS. yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they've always kind of had this dilemma where it's like, yep, you know, it, maybe you're focusing on too many things. I don't know. Yep. I didn't mean for this article to sound so negative. So anyway, new things coming from Linux. I was going to say bold new things, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, hey, they're getting secure boot work. And I mean, that's that's been <laughs> a problem for a long time on the uh, on the uh, ISO for them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's bold enough. I don't think it's bold no. enough. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying here. Okay, I'm grasping at straws, man. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't want to. I I like the Linux. I like the Linux Mint project. I like the Linux yeah, Mint community. Yeah, don't get think, me wrong I just, either. I I worry. I worry they're trying to do yes. too much. I, I, yep. I I I agree. I I agree that they're trying to do too much, but at the same time, not doing enough. Well, Which that's is what weird. happens. That's what happens when you try to when you try to maintain too much. Yeah. Um, you okay. End up yeah, I see not what you're doing saying. Enough. Yeah. And and I, I think that they I think that they need to really decide what their like mission statement is. Mm-hmm. And and you know figure out if if maintaining kind of all three of these avenues LMDE, Ubuntu base, and developing Cinnamon is like that. Does that meet that mission statement? Yep. Maintaining all three of those. Maybe they decide it does, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, I want to see Linux Mint succeed. I want it to keep going, and I want people who love it to keep using it because it it was great for me for years. I'm talking like probably like at least eight, nine, ten years. It was you know good for me. So yeah. Well, this next story you're gonna have to help me pronounce, but I think it's <laughs> Asahi Linux. Asahi. Oh, Asahi. Asahi. Asahi Linux. At least that's how people pronounce it on other podcasts that I've listened to. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, this is a Fedora base uh, that is meant for Apple M1 and M2 hardware. <laughs> this was such a shock to me. Like I was totally blown away when they re- revealed this. I got to say, man, the Apple M1 and M2, especially the M2 chips are yeah. really 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 performing well i yeah <laughs> i i really consider saying getting, a little <laughs> until i saw until i saw what the build i wanted was going to cost i was really yeah, right. considering getting an m2 uh macbook pro <laughs> yeah. um because ten thousand. Oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i think you know the thing is is i think that if if you <sighs> I hate to say if you're an Apple person because if you're an Apple person, you're not even you're not even considering this. Um, no, I've listened to this podcast. No, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Apple people, sorry. Yeah, no, you know, I don't. I don't mean that. I just think that you 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 expect to buy an expensive laptop, but then keep right. it for a very long time, and when right. you sell it or trade it in, it still has value. Versus, yep. you know, when I used to work at Best Buy, if you bought an HP laptop. Twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> Come back next year. It's like a four, like a trade in value, two hundred dollars. You know, like it's, it's got paperweight. <laughs> yeah. Whereas people would trade in their Apple products, like years and years later, they yep. still they still had value, and you could sell them on eBay. Yep. I, I get that there's a, but it's a premium cost, man. I, yep. I looked at a M2 MacBook premium. Pro, and it, unless I got like the smallest one, it was really expensive. Um, but even the M2 MacBook Airs are like, th- because mm-hmm. these chips are so good, the comparison between the Air and the Pro is like almost negligible now. Mm-hmm. Like They yep. both can do video editing, you yep. know, in 4K. Like they both can do. The only reason why <laughs> I was considering the Pro over the Air is because podcasts are really long. So any video editing I would do would be like an hour to two hour long. Right. And I thought, well, maybe that would have an impact. But I don't even know that it would because sure, it's really long, but it's just one it's just one file. You know what I mean? I'm not like, I think, are you talking about battery life? No, no, just the, just the performance on, Oh, the bigger, the video, the more the performance you need to, to edit it. Yeah. Otherwise you should stutter and slow down in the editing application itself. Hmm. I don't know. I, to be honest, I really don't think you would. I really don't think you would. Yeah. I think I'd probably would be fine getting away with the air, but I'm not buying either. I, yeah, I, I realized that was a crazy idea. So, <laughs> yeah, I am not an Apple fanboy at all. I don't own pretty much any Apple products, but uh, I, 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 bought, I do have to say they nailed it with this. I bought an. Um, I have my first iPhone 
this is the first one I've had since the iPhone two. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's the, How do you I, like I, it? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> spoken like a true android user <laughs> eh. i want to love it i want to love it um but uh that and that's the reason why i don't think i'll ever be able to buy one is right that answer right there because i feel like that's going to be me and i'm gonna yeah. be like why did i do this there's so many things <laughs> that like I, anyway that's not what this news article is about all right back <laughs> sorry so the hardware is good the hardware is good and and uh so i think it's interesting that there's this fedora it's not a it's not a fedora project right it's just someone no, taking it's, the fedora it's just base. a spin yeah yeah yep it's the asahi team they're taking it and they're putting it like tailoring it for the m1 m2 chips yeah and when you w- normally when you see things like oh install uh linux on your macbook or uh, yada 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 it's yep. usually like taking an old intel macbook or something like that and installing linux on, on that yep but this is like the brand new, this is the brand new hardware. Yeah. And the, the, the cool thing about this is once they're all said and done, it, you're going to put this flash drive into your Mac and it is going to partition your Mac for you in the way it needs to. It's going to install Fedora and everything and it's just going to be up and running. You're, you're not going to have to do anything. Because like right now you have to partition the Mac using Mac OS and all this stuff. But once this is said and done, they're going to all do it right from the flash drive. I mean, that's that's what I heard, at least. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. So right now it's early days. Um, Say so it's not ready for mass adoption yet. Um, and, uh, you know, this is great because it will lay the groundwork for future, yeah. you know, Apple hardware testing. Definitely. If they're jumping in, you know, now with the M1 and M2, it's it's, uh, it's going to get better fast. Um, yep. I was... I had my hand. I also, I'm wearing my wife's old Apple watch too. I started, I started wearing that whenever I got the, the, oh, this man, is not, this is not down new. The, this down is the not rabbit new. hole. <laughs> I just haven't figured out how to install arch on this thing yet. <laughs> if you ever do that, I, I you, that, that's it. <laughs> you're the master. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's move on to the next. I considered skipping the next one. Um, okay. Well, I just let's just talk about why I can, was considering skipping it. I I put it in the show notes because someone posted it in the Discord, and I right. tried to get all of our show notes from the Discord, so I know that we're talking about things that you know our community cares about. Yeah. Um, and someone posted the Steam usage, the Steam Linux usage has gone up this year. Um, it's by like like two percent or something. It's it's, it's yeah. still it's still a very small percentage. Right, right. Um, and I actually have a pretty cool uh, tracker here that I found on um, uh, gamingonlinux.com. I'll share this. Oh, I wow. Most, I mostly want to talk about why I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so this is actually a really cool tracker. And you can see like a pretty steep. It's wild that we had this like crazy drop off, but then like yeah. huge build up again. Like I wonder what happened there. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> The Steam Deck's gonna fail, and everyone just leaves Linux. And then, this, wait, this the Steam is, Deck is great. Let's buy it. <laughs> this is the Final Fantasy fourteen patch that broke the launcher. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. All the gamers just leave. <laughs> it's only gamers that own Linux. That's it. <laughs> well, using using Steam, it would be. Um, oh, but using using the Final Fantasy on Final Steam. Fantasy. Oh, yeah, gotcha, yeah, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, Obviously, the spike is due to the uh, Steam Deck. People getting Obviously, their Steam Decks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, but even at the spike, we're not at 2% yet. It's at like 1.8, I think is what it is. And what I wanted to talk about is, do we even care? I remember you know, oh, four yeah. or five years ago, we were always <laughs> talking about like, one day it's going to catch up to Windows and all this kind of thing. Like, do we really... We're the Linux desktop, man. Do we care? <laughs> yes. Should we care? Probably not. I don't know what what's the goal here, you know? Uh, yeah, right. I know I know exactly what you're saying. Like so on one hand, on one hand, I want Linux to win. Like I just I <laughs> want it what? to win in, yeah. in, in every just just in just in market share, I guess. Just yeah. in just in in mind share, whatever. Well, just like yeah. on the server where everything's everything's Linux. On the other hand, I don't want all these normal people, no offense to anyone who's yeah. not a techie person, not at all, but I don't yeah. want them all to clutter up my Linux. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that's a pretty good response. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, well, the, so that's kind of what I was thinking about was like, are we ever really going to win over the normies? You know, like, is right. that really... I know that, and I'm look. I've been in this community for a long time. I know that there was a time period where that was the goal, but yeah. I'm saying, is should it be anymore? I mean, at this point, like, I'm all right. So we know the reasons why we philosophically, or even just right. on a comfortable level, enjoy Linux better than Windows. Right. I feel dirty yeah. when I have Windows on my computer. <laughs> Ever since I got this arc, I have both and it feels disgusting. Um, <laughs> but, but I'm not, I'm not your average. I'm not a normie. I don't think that'll ever matter to most people. Right. And, and, and I think that if, if you're looking at gamers specifically, gamers mostly are going to want to use whatever they see works. And I right. think, and I, I, so, okay, I guess I've talked myself into it a little bit. Um, <laughs> Gamers are also willing to take the extra step mm -hmm. if if they feel like it's going to give them a performance. Yeah, I remember a time right. period where people opened multiple windows of StarCraft because it gave you some slight <laughs> advantage, and so people are running like twenty copies of StarCraft at once. So, so gamers will do crazy stuff, and if it yep. was like a huge advantage to use Linux, then then they would, even if they're not like you and I, where we just like it for other reasons besides just gaming. Right, um, and so I guess. I guess the reason why articles like this exist and the reason why gaming on Linux has this tracker here is because it's an indicator that the improvement is happening in such a way that we're seeing the market share increase because these people wouldn't be switching uh, over to Linux if it wasn't working in some way. The right. fact that the Steam Deck is so successful means that gaming on Linux has improved that much right. to, to make it so. You know, so I guess yep. I, I guess yep. in a way I've kind of taught myself into it, but <laughs> but I don't I don't I don't think we should ever be like I don't think we should ever have any notion that we're ever going to beat Windows in this chart. And yeah, if we do, I, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I mean, unless unless Windows went nuts and like yeah. did what what I was talking with one of my friends about where he was saying like. Oh, if they do this like subscription model where you have to pay to use Windows, like I'm talking like like uh, like a cloud based Windows, you mm -hmm. know, like oh yeah, if that happened, then maybe there would be enough pull away from from Windows. But until that happens, I don't think we're going to see if it anything was, even. Close. If it was a one to one, like if performance on Linux was one to one in every scenario, yeah, as good as Windows. You would you would probably see a very large increase in market share, but just because there's right. people that just wouldn't want to pay for Windows. Yeah, right. Exactly. They build a gaming PC and they would just install Linux on it if it was literally the same. You know. Yep. 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 Um. But uh, I think we're as close to that as we've ever been, and I don't know that we're going to be. I don't know that we're going to be one to one anytime soon. Yep. I don't think so. <laughs> um, but anyway, I don't know if I, I guess my point is I don't know if that should be the goal. The goal, right, exactly. But I, but I think that it's a trailing indicator of what the goal should be. So, and that was that was kind of what I taught myself into just now going over that yep. article is that it's it's not it's not necessarily that we want to overtake Windows market share, but the more we do is an indicator that we're making Linux better, and that should be the goal. Right, and and the more people using it, the better it gets because the more companies yep. actually build software for Linux specifically. Oh yeah, that yeah yeah yeah. All right, last uh, news item we have is uh, Glorious Egg Roll, Nabarro <laughs> Steam Deck Edition. We haven't mentioned him in a while. <laughs> I think we mentioned him last episode. I find a reason to work him in every episode. Oh, maybe we did. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I was, you know, the thing about uh, me and Glorious Egg Roll is I was uh, like before Proton, before all of that, I was like a legitimate fan of his YouTube channel. <laughs> and then he got so involved in Proton that he's like in all of our, he's in yep. like all of our news topics. <laughs> I, I, for years, I just thought it was some guy on YouTube. Um, <laughs> let's see if the audio will come through. If I... So this is obviously after a fresh install. Um, I've made it to where it went after you do the fresh install, it'll pop up your, your typical steam deck setup. Uh, like you would expect you set that up and I fixed most of the bugs that were in the previous GameScope session, 
for example, like now you can actually switch back and forth between so deck mode and desktop mode. You can do this as many times as you want. Before you could do it through two or three times and it would hang. So this is um Nabarro running on a Steam Deck and he's showing yeah. the you know the functionality. There there's on their on the Nabarro website they have uh, some details on there's only like two bugs or something um you know that they've detailed. And um so if you've ever used Nabarro, you know that it is a it's a Fedora that has been like tailored for specific uh, right. uh, settings and variations that are better suited for most, you know, your average Linux gaming user. And mm-hmm. they have, they've ported that, not ported that, but they've made a version of that now that is um, compatible with the Steam Deck. And that's really cool. I just, I want to, I want to be excited for this, but at the same yeah. time, I'm like, what's the advantage like is he so so okay let me explain let yeah. me explain yeah, this yeah, yeah. No, so, hold on I, I i didn't install this right away on mine and i can explain <laughs> i can explain why <laughs> i think we're in the same boat here i'm excited about this but i'm more excited for everyone else i don't know that i'm gonna try it myself <laughs> <laughs> but so so okay let me explain myself a little bit so yeah glorious egg roll made a version of proton has been making a version of proton yes. yeah. that is better in most cases than the proton that steam releases. Yep. I so we're going with this. Yep. This is what I'm kind of expecting with this project on the steam deck. I think he's going to try to make his version of fedora on the steam deck mm-hmm. better than steam's own OS. And yeah. there, and he's yeah. going to include his glory segral proton, obviously in, you know, yeah. in that and everything. So I think that's, I think he wants to take steam deck OS, whatever you want to call it, steam OS and just notch it up just that next level so that everything works a little smoother, you know, like that. Cause that's kind of what his goal has been this entire time. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Otherwise there'd be no reason for him to, to do this at all. Yeah, it'd be just, oh, look, I got it working on the Steam Deck. Big deal. The <laughs> angle that I thought you were going to take was that, well, you can take any Steam Deck and install Glorious Egg Roll Proton on it. You don't need to install Nabarro to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Which is, that's which true. Is, which is very true, yeah. Um, you can install you can install Glorious Egg Roll Proton on anything except for Windows. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Um, <laughs> you can install it on any... Uh, <laughs> On Can any Linux, on. really. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably why, hey, they got the subsystem for Linux or whatever it is. Um, <laughs> Windows subsystem for Linux with run Glorious Egg Roll. Proton. That'd be like Glorious Egg Roll Inception. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, uh, so I don't, so the reason, so I have a Steam Deck. I don't, I don't use it enough, honestly. I was thinking like I bought it because I wanted to make video content uh for the podcast and i've not really done that at all so i need to i need to work on that but um i'm not i'm not in a hurry to run out and install Mm navarro on it because i just don't want to be swapping around like you know it's not as easy to swap out the os as my desktop is i mean yeah right theoretically it's 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 identical it should be as easy because it's just a little handheld computer but it's it's really not though it's the, the steam os is like you know, it's installed and designed for this product. Yeah, like yeah. And I'm afraid that even if I were to install something else and then go back to it, I somehow wouldn't get it 100% installed the way it was factory. And like, I'm just not in a rush to change it just yet. Yeah. It's still too new to me to to want to change it too much. I agree um, with you there. I definitely so do. that's <laughs> that's why I'm not running out to do it. But um, we we've been we've been burned by the uh, let's install this distro five times and get five different results even though I did the same exact yeah, thing every exactly, single five yeah. times. I know if I install something else <laughs> and then I try to go back, it's there's gonna be something weird. Yep. Um. So yeah, I'm just not in a hurry to to go testing that, but I do need to make more videos with my Steam Deck though. I need to I need to try out some games and just get footage of like how that game runs on the Steam Deck. Yeah, that'd be cool. Just make it as simple as that. I need to that would fit the channel really well. I need to do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a cool project. I want to keep my finger on the pulse of it. We'll talk about it more on the show as things change. Um, and, uh, but that's, uh, that's about as far as I'm going to go with it for now. Yep. (laughs) I agree with you there. I mean, I don't have a steam deck yet, but, uh, 
Nope. Yeah, I don't think I would put it on either. If even if I have one, <laughs> Nabar is a really cool project though. Is just for the yeah. just for the desktop sake of it. Um, I I did it for a little while, testing it for the podcast, and then even after testing yep. it, I kept it. I've installed it a few times just by choice. Um, yeah, I've got to try it out again because it's it's been a while. Yeah, no, I think it's and it's and it's improved a lot. I'm still in their Discord. Um, yeah. I just lurk there. I, I don't. I don't ever speak. I'm actually. Up. I'm kind of curious if on my laptop, if this one bug. I literally have one bug that I got to figure out uh, how to fix with my TV. So I have my laptop hooked up to a dock that hooks up to my TV. Whenever I reboot the laptop, the video output doesn't go to the TV. Now, if I unplug the video and plug it back in, comes it immediately comes on. Sound works. Everything's good. Mm-hmm. And that's literally the only bug, and I cannot figure out how to fix it. I wonder if that if his would work. I I, I now I kind of am curious. Now I kind of want to try and see if it would work. I put in so that's that's all for the news. The reason why I've not bought a MacBook Pro, well, the reason I was even <laughs> considering it in the first place was because um, I wanted something to edit the podcast on and um, have it not be my main desktop because we're always screwing around with our desktop. Yeah. Right. Whenever right. I screw something up, it takes me a while to get things back to normal. And then yep. like that slows down editing the, the show. Um, so that was my first idea was M2 MacBook pro just for video editing. And then I saw the price of, you know, cause I don't <laughs> want to get the smallest one. And I saw the price of like the next one's up and I said, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> and so that's what started this whole home lab conversation. Right. And um, so I wanted to make it a part of the show where I build my 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 Proxmox home lab build out mm-hmm. with video pass through using my old uh, NVIDIA card. And um, and uh, my progress on that, uh, I have all the hardware now. I have the hard I have it built. It's beside me. Oh, um, OK. I even have all the peripherals. Um, but I haven't actually installed Proxmox yet. <laughs> I haven't done any of the software <laughs> side of it yet. Um, but I'm at that point now, so I need to, uh, I need to start working on that. I did get a larger hard drive. I think last time we were talking about, I only had like a spare, yeah. um, 250 gig. So what I'm considering doing, and, and I would appreciate your feedback. You've used Proxmox mm-hmm. before. I've never used it. And also if anybody listening to the show wants to write in a comment on their suggestion, I'm considering still using that 250 gig hard drive to install Proxmox on. Mm-hmm. But I have a two terabyte hard drive that I was going to use for the actual storage of the VMs um, and all the data in the VMs. Does that seem like a good idea or should I just scratch that and just go straight to the two, the two terabyte? I mean, what am I really gaining by having an extra 200, 250 gigs, you know? Um, so the, the thing you would be, would be gaining is the OS, the underlying OS Proxmox would not be running on the same drive as your, um, yeah. Uh, VMs would be running on. So you wouldn't have that IO hit on the same drive. Okay. That's why I, I do the same exact thing. Well, I, I do a similar thing, but okay. I, I have a RAID set up on my Proxmox, but that's another story. But I do a similar thing where my, my OS is separated from my VMs for that reason. So that there's that little, it's, it's a little, you notice it. It's a, there's a little hit there, especially mm-hmm. if w- for what you're doing, it's going to, it's, you're going to notice it. I think if hmm. you don't separate those drives out. Oh, really? Even okay. on an SSD. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's good to know. So um, that was my thought was that separating it, I'd see some sort of performance increase. That's what my hope was. So. Yep. I, like I guarantee right you, you'll see, you'll see a, uh, in performance increase. Um, I could just yeah, I install I could just install Windows on this and not Proxmox and just use it you for video could. editing. But you I could, feel like there's more utility. How would your utility. soul feel if you did that? Right, I know. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. And and I feel like there's more utility that I just haven't tapped into yet. Yeah. Um and I want to I think I'm going to eventually expand the hard drive space and build a NAS. Mm-hmm. Um Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But right now it'll just be proxmox running with that with that two ter- terabyte hard drive um i mean like what what i would do personally is i would just try to set it up and if it becomes too much of a problem or if you hit a roadblock like like let's say the motherboard for some reason won't pass through the drive the the gpu yeah then then abort and just go right to right to windows i it's mean like don't, don't new, waste your time <laughs> like it's a relatively new motherboard 
it, it, honestly, it's it's not a bad PC. Like it's mm-hmm. it's a yeah. It's it it's kind video of an, editing worthy. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of an unnecessary build that I did at the beginning of this year. I was just being crazy. I don't know. But now you're going to get use out of it, so that's good. That yeah. that, that makes yeah, me yeah. feel better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like seeing, having hardware just sitting around as you oh, see no, my yeah. uh, my last one I gave away. I I I always find something to do with. I don't I'm the same way. I don't like uh just for, you know, I'm the same way. I'll donate it like or if it's too give it old. to somebody. Yeah, if it's too old to use, I understand that. But like, if yeah. it's usable, I'm like, why is it just sitting there doing nothing? There's always somebody. <laughs> there's always a school or a uh, local. There's like yep. a, a local uh, um, after school program. When I was a kid, um, part of probably, well, I can't give all the credit to this guy because my dad was also in IT professionally. So I literally was a toddler crawling in and out of computer cases and stuff um <laughs> but also when i was a kid there was like this really cool guy that was at the boys and girls club with, that i went to after school and he had a whole computer lab set up and it was just he was just some guy that just enjoyed doing this for the kids and it was all his spare like computer equipment and stuff because the cool. local boys and girls club didn't have any money for any of this it was just right, he was just course. some dude and we used to go in there and play doom and, and quake and stuff <laughs> That's in awesome. His, in his makeshift computer lab. Yeah, I've always, <laughs> th- those kind of community projects are really cool. And uh, I'd like to get involved with more of that, um, especially now that my son's old enough that he could he could go yeah, to. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um. So uh, games in... Uh, oh, okay. Games recently released or soon to release. These are kind of the three games that have been on my mind and we've talked about mm-hmm. on the Discord a little bit. That way there's some gaming talk in this. This will be the this will be <laughs> rounding out the end of the show. Um which one do you want to talk about first? What are you most interested in? Well, so I would say I'm most interested in Starfield. And not add to this add to this discussion if there's anything else that I didn't put here, but Yeah, no. Um no, these these well, I don't I actually don't remember this the the p1 p p p p p i don't remember that one yeah uh so but but starfield i'm definitely interested in yes. not for the game actually which is weird so for me i need to see how this first game comes out after bethesda got bought out by microsoft oh i need yeah, to see yeah. if this is going to be a good game because if this ends up being an excellent game Elder Scrolls Six is going to be absolutely oh. amazing. I, I I don't even want to tie it to that because if it's terrible, I don't want to believe the Elder Scrolls. Trust 6 me, I I'm already like, if this sucks, I'm going to be just so disappointed. I, I got to be honest with you, I I have high hopes. I think it's going to be. Good. I do too. I think it's going to be think, really good. I think, I think that I, I I don't I Bethesda has. Mm-hmm. I was a Blizzard fan for so long. <laughs> and the last couple of years have shown you me no <laughs> well the last the last couple of years have shown me that boy was i blind i should have been a mm. bethesda fan all this time because their games are they they, they always were so good and even yep. even presently the games that they're releasing and now i'm not a big fallout fan so like i know that there's like yeah i agree i'm not either i'm not really into that um and i know that there's some like i, I think the most recent one like people don't like um yeah 76 yeah that was kind of a flop but everything elder scrolls has been great and i think that they yes. have like a lot of respect for the the i the ip like yes the mmo is elder scrolls online is probably the best business model for an mmo yep, i mean i agree it has the benefits of free to play with also the benefits of subscription because yeah. i've always been an mmo player where i would rather play a subscription and not feel like I have a bunch of free to play players that are just yep, trying to pay yep. to win and buy everything. And, you know, I, I would rather just pay a monthly subscription to get around that. Yep. And they've done such a good thing where it's like, you can either buy the content as they, as it rolls out, or you can pay the subscription and you just get it all as long as you're paying the subscription mm-hmm. or you can free to play and play it for free. Um, and the only things that you can buy in the shop is either those things that you would get if right. you were, if you were paying the subscription or like cosmetic stuff. And, uh, I think that's a perfect model yep. and is probably the best MMO that out of the main, you know, final fantasy 14 is, is doing really well. And I think they're doing really good with their com- community, but I don't, res- I, I'm not into that type of story. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, 
you know, it's like more anime than it is fantasy. And like, I'm right. It's, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. really like my bag. Um, I think Bethesda, I think that, you know, they're a great company, man. I think they're, I think they're doing yep. good things. And I think that Starfield yep. is going to be good. The only thing we talked about in the discord was I saw an article that, um, they may, they, they were kind of pressured to get this out by a certain date, even oh, though they yes, wanted a little right. more time. Um, but also that could be blown out of proportion. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like that probably came from some conversation yeah, with developers. Yep. You know, as soon as people hear that, they start thinking, um, oh, it's going to uh, be garbage. cyberpunk. Oh, no, they start thinking cyberpunk because yeah, you're right, dude. Yeah. Cyberpunk was in, in most in recent years was the worst release of of a triple a game i've seen and this is also like, really yeah. similar to no man's sky which was kind of a similar thing no man's sky yeah. when it first came out yep didn't yep. live up to any of the expectations or the hype nope. but then later on they kind of caught up i think no man's sky today is i haven't played it actually but supposedly supposedly it's, good. it's a really good game now yep. it just it wasn't really even that way cyberpunk launch. is fine now it's yeah. just when it first comes out that that first like like six months are crucial you don't yeah. want your game to to crash and and have so many glitches you can't even play it. I think know? that <laughs> I think there will probably be. I don't think to the to the degree of those two games, but I think there will probably be some sort of like it's almost. That's so, another thing too is just even Elden Ring, like everything to yeah. some degree has bugs when it's launched. Oh yeah, there's not a perfect game, no, right? No, no. Not anymore. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and I, I so I mean to some degree we'll have we'll have those types of reviews, but right. I think it's going to be within within reason. I really think it's going to be a so, good game. I think it's going to be Skyrim in space. (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what what everybody wants. I think that's what we want. Yeah. (laughs) So this is this is the thing. Just quick with with Bethesda games, especially Skyrim. Yeah. There's a certain kind of charm to the bugs that they have in the game. Like I feel (laughs) like they almost cherry pick the ones that they want to squash. Yeah. As they're doing it, because they know their fans kind of expect this like weird, like <laughs> buggy kind of situation. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I, I've always felt like that with every single other Scrolls game. There's always been these weird bugs that I'm just like, why didn't they fix that? Why is that a thing? Why am I getting hit by a giant flying into the sky a thousand feet when I'm sure they could have fixed that easily? I, I think <laughs> I, I have high hopes for it. I mean, we won't really know. Um, right. But we've seen a lot of gameplay footage for it there's been a lot of footage that's come out in at all the different conventions and things like that. They're not yep. really hiding the footage of the game. Um, no. And also it's not like, it's not, it seems bigger than I think it, it obviously is really big because you have all the space and planets and, you know, yep. so, but it's not, I don't, I think they're doing some really cool marketing trickery here to make it seem (laughs) i don't think it's as insurmountable as we believe it is right right um so yeah i have high hopes for it i think it's gonna be good i was telling you i might buy it when it when it launches i don't know that i'll buy it right when it comes out because i have uh i have another large game that i want to play and that's Baldur's gate 3 which i already own Baldur's gate 3 i bought it back when it was in alpha and i've already played through the like the opening chapter what kept it happening with me with Baldur's Gate 3 was when it was in alpha, they kept doing updates. And when they would do an update, right. if you didn't do the update precisely, you would lose your character and all your progress. So I started <laughs> over like three times. Then finally, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to wait for the final version to get live. I'm, I'm not going to keep doing this. Um, but even when I played it back then, there was a lot of stuff that was completely unfinished. Um, right, right. And uh, like the mind flare and the opening of the game had these like wild tentacles that look like PS one graphics <laughs> and just all kinds of stuff that was completely unfinished. Um, and now the game is finished. It's launched zero microtransactions. You buy the game. Ooh, okay. 60 bucks. It's an expensive game, but they're not trying to nickel and dime you out of everything else. And it's a, uh, it's a good length game. Hey, to, 60 to you bucks and I, is cheap nowadays. Come on. Yeah, I know. Games are 70 <laughs> nowadays. Um, to you and I, it's, it's a long game. It's, it's a pretty long game. Cause you know, yeah. you and I have also, we've said a lot of times we like shorter indie games, which Starfield's not going to be either. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it's, but it's a very good game and I've played it, you know, I'm a D and D player myself. Right. Um, right. I have all the books right to my, to my left here. And there are some abstract things in, in D and D mm. mage hand. 
how do you put that in a video game? Like, you know, where <laughs> it's, it's so abstract. You say, my character uses mage hand to like touch that book across the room. How do you do that in a video game? They have found ways to interpret these more ambiguous things and put it yeah. in gameplay mechanics. And it is literally, it is literally Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition. There, there is such minor changes to the rules mm-hmm. that if you notice them at all, you are like a rule, rules lawyer <laughs> level 70 because it is it's it is so close to the real thing. Like the rules are identical. I'll bet That's you crazy. your home game probably house rules, you know, worse than these. Like it's it is 5e exactly. Wow. Um, that's cool. That, that, that's cool that they actually they, they must be like super fans, like the people who are developing yeah, yeah. the actual game because they must have put a the, lot of detail into it. The studio that made it is the same studio that did um which is not um it's not five E. It's like their own uh it's like their own thing. But mm. they did um Oh god, we've talked about it on the podcast a few times. I really like the second one. I can't think of the name. People are yelling at their phones, yelling at their iPads, <laughs> iPods. Uh, oh my gosh. It's another, it's another CRPG um, game just like this. Oh, I don't original know. Sin. I don't know. Divinity Original Sin too. Oh they're yes. Just, they're Divinity. the same people yes, from yes, yes, yes. Div- Divinity Original Sin. Yeah. Um, so, so yes. Yeah. They're, they are uh, definitely RPG, you know, fans. Um, so I think it's cool. I think it's cool. It's getting get really good reviews. I think it's awesome that a game is coming out that you can just buy flat out. They're not trying to sell you any, yep. any extra content. There probably will be yep. DLCs in the future. Hey, um, DLCs is fine. I think DLC is one of the mm-hmm. best like structures that games need to just keep it's, going at. It's perfect for these CRPG games too. Yeah, these, because you get you get the rule in the original game. You get sort of the rule base how to build a character, how to play the game. You get this opening story. And then in the future, they can build off of that by releasing new stories yeah, you can play. Um, exactly. It's exactly. a really good formula for that. Um, so glad that's coming out. I'm going to I'm gonna start playing that again soon and try to get all the way through it this time instead of uh, stopping uh, halfway through three times. Yeah, in you'll row. definitely have to tell me how that goes because I'm interested in that game. It's just I'm not, I'm not into, not that I'm not into Dungeons and Dragons, I just haven't played it. Uh, you yeah. know enough yeah, to no, really I've, to really I've know. invited you man you need to come we need I to, know I know we need I to know. do we can't even record a podcast how are we supposed <laughs> to play a whole campaign yeah, that's actually that is actually true it would it would probably hurt the show if we did it um <laughs> I still would like to do it we could do it as part of the show somehow I don't know is it too far removed is it too far removed from Linux that we could we'll do that to make another show <laughs> yeah we should invite you know what we should do a Linux CKP oh my after gosh. dark <laughs> yeah, CKP after dark, but we should invite like other Linux hosts because there's got to be a crossover there, you know? Yeah, there got to be. Yeah, Leo plays D and D. Yeah, okay. We should find like other Linux I, I'm just, community. I'm just going to be the idiot noob that's just like, like, <laughs> what do I do now, man? No, like, you won't. You won't. I'm telling you, the way <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons seems daunting if you've never done it, but once you do yeah. it for the first time, you realize that it's just. You're just telling, you're just pretending with your friends. You're telling a story together <laughs> and the dungeon master, it's his responsibility to figure out how you do things. You just tell him what you okay. want to do. Um, but, uh, so also Baldur's Gate three, I've reported several times. It works great under Proton on your desktop. Um, they're getting lots of good, uh, steam deck reviews too. So it's, it's working great on Proton. If you're a Linux gamer out there, it's definitely worth picking up. The last thing I wanted to talk about this episode, I have no idea how it works. Um, under any kind of uh proton or anything because it just came out today i just downloaded it oh, okay. in the background while we we're doing the podcast oh, geez, and okay <laughs> it may not work on linux we'll find out um uh, but this is palea um so palea is an mmo but there's almost no combat As a matter of fact i don't think there is any confirmed combat it is okay it is all of the my wife plays Disney uh, Dreamlight or whatever that game is. Where yes, my wife does too. Yeah, dude, my wife. She's done every quest. She's waiting for new quests oh my to gosh. come out. And and yeah, uh, same here. My wife's the same <laughs> way. That's amazing. This is like an MMO <laughs> version of that, basically. Like you, you, uh, you, you garden, you cook, you make furniture. You do. It's like kind of like you're doing all the side stuff in in a normal MMO. Okay, but that's the main. There's no. There's no going and killing some boss or anything like that. It, it is just, it's just a, uh, they call it a cozy MMO. It's just cozy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of interested in it. I, I, I remember I, uh, 
I favorited this a while back when they first announced it because at, at, we're in an MMO drought, right? Yeah, and they're right, right, all right. they all come out, they're all the same, they all fail. And <laughs> I just thought maybe this one's on to something. Maybe it really doesn't matter that you go kill a boss together. You know, maybe you just so, need to garden a little bit. <laughs> I think I know why you like this game so much. Oh, why is that? And it all comes back to like the beginning of our whole podcast. What is, why is Albion, that? Albion Online. Oh, you're exactly right. Parrot, far, parrot Farmer. You're exactly right. Yep. You're exactly right. I thought about that too. You know, I used to play Albion Online. I, I spent all my time on my island farming. <laughs> I know that's why you like this game. <laughs> No, you're, you're exactly. Like, this kind of feels like Albion. Okay. Yeah, no, you're, you're exactly right. But the thing about Albion is, I always felt like I'm missing out by not doing the combat stuff. And and this I is would, Albion 2.0. <laughs> right. No, this is this is the game. If if Albion Online was just the farming aspect, I I wouldn't feel like I was missing out. And that's what this is, <laughs> Haley. Like that's what you're supposed to do. So I feel like it, it matches. <laughs> As soon as you said that, I was just thinking, I, I was like, what the heck was that? Oh, yeah, Albion. That's right. <laughs> it's uh, so it's I, what I from what I understand. Again, I'm, I'm downloading it in the background right now. So from what I understand, it is um, for one thing, it's free. There's OK, no yeah, I see that. It. Yep. They're doing microtransactions. So it's the opposite yeah. of what we were just talking, what we were just praising yeah. about Baldur's Gate and ESO. Um, but the microtransactions in a game like this, like, what am I going to buy a new apron? You know what I mean? Like, what is it? Yeah. Like, what, yeah. what pay to win? What is winning? <laughs> there is no winning. I grow bigger car- is- carrots than my neighbor. You know, like what, <laughs> what is, what is pay to win? What is winning? Somebody will figure out how to, to figure out what winning is. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. And they will pay millions to figure it out. <laughs> I, uh, so the, the smaller servers like the rumor i've heard is like there's only like like less than 30 people to a server oh wow like it's like really small servers because they're trying to build uh oh yeah 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 like like well like 20 i think there's 20 people to a server on valheim something like that probably is similar to that um and you know valheim has combat but it's not really the focus you know what i mean no no um i think it's kind of like similar similar graphics yeah it's uh it's like Not, uh, not the same but similar Right, yeah, it's kind of like um, you know, uh, Valheim has more of a pixelated thing. This is more of like a painterly, um, yeah, kind of deal. But yeah, you're right in it's that not quite it's cell shaded, stylized. It's, yeah, yeah, stylized. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking of. Um, yeah, I, I heard an in- I watched an interesting video the other day on um, MMOs. I love watching videos that are like about MMO philosophy and how like gaming communities mm-hmm. interact. And there was there was something that talked about meaningful interactions in MMOs that in the early days of MMOs, we felt like they were different because we interacted with people more, but it was, it was really more that you interacted with a smaller group of people, but yeah. more meaningfully. Whereas right. today you interact with a bunch of people. If you get into some kind of group finder in World of Warcraft, you know, within an hour you could group up with six different groups of five people, but you didn't talk to any of them. None of them were meaningful interactions. Right. And so what my hope is is with Palea is that because it is smaller communities of people, that there'll be reason for them to interact with each other and you'll you'll actually have to remember each other and actually have meaningful interactions. So we'll see if that's the case. That's pretty cool. But um Actually, yeah. I, I knew nothing about this game, and now I'm actually kind of interested, other than the <laughs> microtransactions. Dude, I get, <laughs> hey, you know what? We should we should refer a friend, because I get like a fancy hat if I refer Ooh. you. Yeah, so I, <laughs> maybe we might both get a hat. Then I might give Bo a fancy hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm, I'm literally going to try it after the show, so I'll, I'll report in next week how how it went. Um. Well, thanks for listening. Um, I think this was a great episode. Uh, a lot of cool stories this episode. I'm excited about uh, Asahi, Asahi, Asahi Linux. Asahi. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm ordering my trackball right now. I'm going to order me a trackball. <laughs> All right. We'll see you next week. Peace. See ya. <laughs>